The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Hi, bro. It's not Tommy O'Brien. He'll be back soon, but I'm sitting in. This is the Dow's down 306. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien, and I hope that if the voice lasts. We will go for two hours here. Right at this moment, you still got time if you want to go to uh, Larry's uh, live uh, trading. What, what did he call it? It's not a webinar. Well, I guess it's a webinar. A trading show right now going on. It should be fantastic. And I uh, just wanted to have a quick look. Oh, a lot of signups. That's fantastic. Good. All right. So as it stands right now, the Dow is down 310 at 38,422. So you see this peak D. One of the things I was looking at, the daily chart on the left, this is the futures, the weekly chart in the middle, and the right side has the monthly. And wow, what a quick start. We've just got a little ping. Live Trading Fridays. Oh, that's right. Thank you very much, my wonderful engineer, Al. Yes, it's called Live Trading Fridays every second Friday. Uh, I think it's two Fridays a month. I'm not sure how it's going to work. But every second Friday, Larry's going to be doing a live trading uh, show. And it should be really exciting. And uh, all right, so let's get on with this. We want to look at the Dow down uh, 295. <clears throat> so... I, this is the cash that I've been. This is what I've been showing my subscribers um, every day. Of, and since we've been, we we went short. And I discussed. It's technical Friday. In my show, I'll talk about peak C1, C2, how it acts like a peak D. But in the chat, I'll just show you this really quickly because obviously we always have new people here at TFNN uh, around the world. So let me click on that. That's not what I was looking for. This is what I'm looking for right here. Right there. In the, just a simple technique. In the Chapman Wave methodology, we try to identify the low bar, count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, um, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. The objective is to get from a buy signal, upgrade to a buy mode, which says it should take you to at least four higher peaks, peak D. <clears throat> at D, other things can happen. And at D, you can have your sharpest pullback. You can have Chapman Wave instant restart. Just within three bars, you make a new a new recovery high to leg E becomes an E slash A, F slash B, because you've got an alternate count. And it can take you to another four higher peaks. All right, got that out the way. Let's just do this. So this peak C1 to peak C2, where it was 20 points below the 39,889 high, acted as a peak D, and we had already gone short because of all uh, what I was looking at technically, um, and we are still short the Dow. And I drew in this pattern. Now, in the chart that I showed subscribers every single day, uh, with my newsletter, the opening call, and Trader's Corner, <clears throat> at least two charts go out every day, I had drawn in this, and I said, we've got a left side, right side price time match. That's where you try to find... What I call the plumb line, where there's a chance that the number of bars on the left side from a low can go to a high and then come back in the same number of bars to that exact same point, or it's the reverse. And in this particular instance, we did that. We came, in fact, within one, a day early, we broke the uh, 39,457 low that was made uh, back in March. And we went to 38,000, uh, 38, I can't remember if it was uh, 400 and something or 300 and something. And we bounced. I said, this has the characteristic of a Chapman Wave Roman candle. Be careful because if you take out at 38,000, I think I said 300. If we go below that, uh, you're going to test the low of the day and maybe break it. And then we'll see what happens. Well, there was a very big turnaround intraday. It was a really suspicious move. But nevertheless, it was a move, and that's all you can say. It was a very good move. Now, what we're looking at is that in this particular chart that shows the daily here with this uptrend line, now I can get rid of this. I like to get rid of lines that are not important anymore. That was, in fact, the resistance. Uh, that was the support level that became the resistance, and then it just fell completely. I don't know what I took out there. I took out something there. Um, and we and I had the Chapman Wave inside track, support level, inside wedge, support, resistance, this is the line that if it's pink on the way down, becomes support. If it's green on the way up, becomes resistance. That's your target line. 
and it coincided to exactly where we went to yesterday. All right, and then we went even below to 38,197. I couldn't show this chart today, but I'd already drawn it in. And this is this chart that says that if we fail today, and the trend I suspect is changing, if we fail today on the right side, we're now looking at the tide turning to down. This is the Dow, the 38,089 level. There's a chance that we're going to get to it by, was it by the 17th, when's the 17th of April? 17th of April would be uh, by Wednesday. All right. So with that said, and then the 120-minute chart is on the right. So at this particular point, uh, and the one in the middle has its automated Chapman Wave support levels. The next one in the daily is 37,657. But in the 120-minute chart, look how beautifully the support levels held. And look at that resistance over there. 38,085 is the next level. That's a long way down. That's over 450 points. Doesn't have to be in one day. But I'm just saying, I have the parameters quite clear. And not only that, we didn't have a trap and wave trend gauge. When the trend gauge on a, on a strange day like it was yesterday has a fairly narrow range and it doesn't go very high, um, to me it says that you've got to be careful because there's a kind of a nonchalance there, the kind of eh, and you can't have an eh attitude in this market no sir -ree. all right so enough with that let's get right on to this I, i'm so upset that tommy's not able to decipher exactly what's going on right now here in the show because he would do a wonderful job explaining the differences between the perception of um, inflation uh, deflation uh, putting it together with the technicals and the fundamentals uh, as well as the, the yields, what the yields exactly mean. The, we've been here before. Why are we acting this way at this particular time? Anyway, I'll do my best. Most importantly, what we're looking at, let me just get this right now. This key support level you can see in the futures are right here at the 5194-ish area between 51, let's call it 5190 just for the moment. <clears throat> and what I did is in the Chapman methodology, I had... Oh, let me just talk about this. I'll do more in my, if I remember. I'll do more in my show. But for those of you who trade the futures, get you. By now, you should know that when you make a, a, from the four o'clock close the previous day, when you start to see a really narrow trading range at the upper level, not at the lower level, but at the higher level, at the at the, the most the recent highs, and it goes on. Be careful. There is a really good chance that when it fails, it's going to take out the low and sh drop sharply. This went right through the 200 period moving average. Uh, so we were tootling along in the 5240s, uh, 5250s, and now look where we are. We're at 5200. So right at this particular moment, uh, with the 15 minutes or so to go before the, open, the opening of the market, of course, for many of us who are up uh, at 6 o'clock, the, the really the, the most the best trading situation very often is between 6 or 6.30 and maybe 8.35 in the morning. It's almost like an entire day's worth of trading. Sometimes you can get a two-click session. This would have been a two-click session. I was I had internet, I can't tell you, through, the, through late yesterday afternoon into the evening, into the morning, I had internet problems and email problems. So I couldn't really do anything much uh, other because it was one of those situations where I could have got a position and then had no internet and then what? So in the meantime, back at the ranch, that was a fantastic two-click session. If in the 50 to 45 area, you were able to go one click and maybe you could hold, wait the whole day, who knows, uh, before you get out. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers, whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Brian, this is the morning market kickoff. The Dow futures are down. The E-mini futures are down. 40 down futures are down. 257. Coming back a little bit from the low of the day. <clears throat> day is young. You never know. Look, yesterday we were down. In fact, what was so interesting, yesterday, the E-mini. <clears throat> oh, no, it's not what I want. This is what I want right here. The E-mini right there. <clears throat> so this is the E-mini. Uh, the nine period moving average has never gone pink, not since the uh, on the 4th of November, it went green, green above the 14. So the green is uh, the nine period moving average when it's above the 14 period moving average, is stay, it, it's green when it's below, it goes pink. Since that day, not once has it gone pink, but it went pink for the last couple of days. And yesterday, the spy was pink. As we started the show, uh, when I did my show at 10 o'clock, and what happened was it was pink, and then it went green. So the E-mini was the clue that something was not quite right, and we've gone one at a time. We went from the Dow, and this is very interesting. We went to the IWM, I uh, know the QQQ, and look what happened. The QQQ went uh, pink for a couple of days, and yesterday it went green. Now it's down forward 441.47, so let's go to the NQ, which is the futures. Aha, pink didn't go green yesterday. To me, this is just an incredible one or two days you can understand. Uh, since the, the green, since you went uh, to a bull mode back on the 6th of November of 2023, and that was down at the, uh, let's call it the 35th, 15th, 15,300. Uh, now look at this. We're at 18,300. <clears throat> and we're at 
And just for the last, uh, since the uh, 4th of April, it went pink and it's remained pink. I think this is a trend change, but this is a daily chart. Look, if I go to the weekly chart, even the Dow, let me just go to this, I'll change it to weekly. Look at this. Uh, it's green. Look at the Dow. Let's go to the Dow Futures. YM. Green. It's just, a, I call this the indicator of last resort. It is like like the Fed is the bank of last resort for the, for the country. So for me, the, the YM, sorry, the 914 period moving average, ah, it's an amazing, amazing. I've, I've fought it, believe me, every once in a while because I use other indicators. That's how we got the Dow at just about at the top because I use other indicators. But you need the confirmation, and we haven't got the confirmation. And the SMHs, look at this, the SMHs are down three today. They were up five yesterday, 224.00, round number. Um, and look how far now the price is away from the, oh, this is the weekly chart. Let's go to the daily chart. You've got to talk apples to apples and not apples to oranges. There you are. So this, if there's a, to me, you'd have to see 219 probably before you start to see that pink in a concerted way. So this is a work in progress. Anything can happen. Uh, look at NVIDIA. I haven't even looked at it today. NVIDIA is down nine at 896.66. Pink didn't turn up. Um, look at uh, AVGO, Avagio, which was Avagio. Now it's Broadcom, AVGO, using this one technique. Green, uh, down 20 right now, but had a fabulous day yesterday. All right, let's get out of this. And let's go to what's really important. What we're looking at, is that the uh, before the market opens at 9:22 a.m. Eastern time, and this is the uh, morning market kickoff. Tommy O'Brien, uh, he'll be back soon. We're looking at the um, NQ. Let's go to the NQ. NQ is down 190 at 18,290s, and that is pink and a state pink. But the QQQ, remember, went green for a moment. So we're going to be watching this, and this is a work in progress. Look how much you got to do. You got to go to the 17,900s before you even get a really good signal that says, wow, that is impactful. That says you're making the arch formation and you can start to look at the chance of getting to the 17,623 low in the futures that was made on the 21st of Feb. That's if you take out 18,000. The resistance now is all the, the whole 18,500s. All right, let's look at the Russell 2000 RTY down 40. That is a lot. Down 14 today at 2,043. Um, whoa. Uh, 1,000. Oh, the, the voice. Uh-oh. And we only have an hour and a half to go. All right. Talk calmly. Here we go. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. <clears throat> All right. Oh, I should sing my chat and wave, buy at the low and sell at the high song. Ah, yeah. So let's do this. So that's the RQY. Now let's go to the, um, the 200 period moving averages at 1984. Let's go to bonds. Bonds are up 20, 26, 30 seconds. Is it too late for the bonds to have a rally now when other things are going on? After all, JP Morgan just uh, uh, came out with some earnings that were a little bit disappointed, down almost 6 at 189 Made a 200.94 all-time high the other day with a chat wave two-bar reversal, 272 on the 28th of March. 294, just a tad above it, on the 1st of April. And now we've come down, not sharply, we've just come down a little bit. And we're watching, this is a peak C in the weekly chart, so it's still very bullish. <coughs> oh, oh, not good. All right, so let's look at um, gold. Gold is up $42. 24.18.2 is the high today on the continuous contract. It's just a tad lower than that. And I, I spoke about this earlier in the week, well, for a long time now. It said to me that gold is maybe moving as a, as a geopolitical statement. Uh oh, this is not good. Um, so, yes, what we're looking at here is gold. I, I think this is, has to do with the Mideast. Uh, if, it, if it's going up together with crude oil and crude oil right now, 
is up 2.22 at 87.22. The reason why, <coughs> excuse me, for subscribers to the opening call, we have the stock in the oil sector is because I, I think, I don't think this is just a small little move to the upside. I am a little upset that it's only leg D. I mean, it's already at leg D in the weekly chart because it made a peak D top. Remember the four higher peaks to get to a DR? Oh, this is not good. <coughs> Sip of water there. Had tea, a little water. All right, this is not good. Right, do I have some ink right here? Let me just add this. A little gummy bear. Oh, that's bad. We've got a break coming up. Crude oil is up 2.27. This is not such good news. Dow is down. Futures are down 252. I'll be back. I'll try to resolve my throat problem as soon as I return. Basil Chapman sitting for Tommy O'Brien. Be right back after the market opens. Tigers, we have some exciting news. Live Trading Fridays are here. Join Larry Pesavento every second and fourth Friday of the month, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time, as he places short-term trades and gives insights into his strategies. That's right, that means the first Live Trading Fridays event starts this Friday, April 12th. Make sure to sign up so you don't miss the potential for huge gains. If you've attended Larry's stellar webinars before, you'll be familiar with the Live Trading portion. Live Trading Fridays will be strictly this portion. That's three hours of pure trading. All trade positions will be communicated clearly, and all questions will be answered in a timely fashion during these live events. When signing up, make sure to save $50 by using code LARRYLIVE at checkout. This code is valid only for this month, and the discount stays with you for as long as you're a subscriber to the service. So don't delay. Sign up, sit back, and follow Larry Pesavento as he places trades live. See you there, Tigers. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. We're back. I think maybe we resolved it a little bit. The Dow's down 224. Not bad. At 38,237. Testing yesterday's low, it hasn't quite got there yet. Um, let me just have a look at this. Yeah, so um, 
I want you to also check the VIX index right now because that would be a clue. The VIX index skyrockets today. Maybe we're doing another oversold situation intraday and we have a couple of days of rally. But it looks to me very much like we've got a trend that has the possibility. Yep, look, there goes the, the futures are up to a leg D now in a leg C. A leg C in the Chapman Wave methodology in the one-minute chart, a leg, a leg B in the five-minute chart. Is this going to be just a bounce? Well, I'm saying let's look at the uh, let's look at the um, semiconductors. So SMH is trading <clears throat> down four at uh, two twenty three twenties. Um, that nine period moving average is still green; it's not even budging. And if, in fact, by the end of the day we can get a move, so two twenty three, if there's a chance. The low is 223.25, so it's almost at the low. If this, so there are two patterns I'm looking at. The one is this cup formation. I drew it with a dashed line. The most important is the one that looks very much like it's an arch formation. I call it the dreaded H, because if it fails, takes out the left side low. That's that could be that could be very serious. But that's all the way down at 210, uh, to where is that? 212.82. Huh, that's quite a way down. So this is a work in progress, and we'll have to make the, uh, make sure that we're going one step at a time. Don't want to get too carried away. Um, we, I should mention that we are we do have a short position, and that's something that we're going to monitor, and have a look at this here. So let's see what Nvidia is doing. It's only down four at two twenty. Oh, wrong one, Nvidia. Down seven and a half. So there are a couple of things we need to look at. So NVIDIA went back to an L after going pink um, the other day. So this is, it's as I say, it's a work in progress. Until, these, until you start to take out the entire month worth of upper level trading in most of these charts, this is just a consolidation. I, I said to subscribers, we, we've got our positions. I don't want to get too carried away. We need, it's a work in progress. Uh, I, the fact that the uh, semi, semiconductors just took the, the slightest opportunity yesterday to have a really good rally tells me that there's still internal buying. There's a residual strength, and you cannot ignore that. So you, I don't want to get too carried away to the downside. But let's look at the home builders. Look at the HGX. HGX, oh, I haven't even updated it for a while. Wow, I've been looking at all the home builders, et cetera, but I haven't looked at the HGX, and the HGX is the <clears> – <throat> for the Alpha Housing Sector Index. So let me just, we'll do this live. I removed that plus because it was actually a down arrow at a PD. Then you've got a new buy signal right here. Nine period moving average turns positive. So you've got peak A right there. So this is, yep, that's an A. Look, we've got an A. B, I just want to double check something because I every, every peak has its own implication. You cannot, that's your only obligation in Chapman Wave. So I can see that that's 56, 55. Yep, that's it. I knew that could have been a peak. That's why I stopped. You know, you do this uh, uh, maybe 700,000 times. Actually, I think it's maybe it's close to a million for 30 years more. Uh, doing the Chapman Wave notation. Uh, here's another one. That's a C. Yep, C and a D. All right, now we start a brand new one. A. B, C, D, E, and F. So you make a top right here. So this, I need to put a, a, a down arrow, an up arrow, and then that D gets a plus sign because, the, look, the 9 pre moving average is still acting very well and didn't make an instant restart, E, and then you get a down arrow <clears throat> for a sell signal. At the end of the day, we might make it a sell mode. <clears throat> watching this very closely. Why? Because the builders were ignoring the high interest rate. But as I was looking at it, and one of the, one of the things that really, uh, to me, is very important, look at the measurement. Look at how strong the MACD and the stochastic were and the, and the green 9 period moving average when it went to that peak D. <clears throat> then it pulled back. When it went to the highest high, the all-time high of 742.53, uh, 
Right there, 752.43 on the uh, 27th, uh, 28th of March. Now look at this. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at the difference between the technicals. Look at this high right here. Oops, and this high right here. Let me move this over. Oh, there we go. Right there. Look at that. Look how strong. This went higher. This went higher. But look how quickly it pulled back. It went from over 80% to under 80% so quickly. Over 80% is good for the stochastic. Under 80% says so start to be a little careful. Under 20% is very poor. Here it is at 15%. So this just says to me, finally we're going to see, and that's look at Toll Brothers. <coughs> Excuse me. Up. Oh, it's unchanged at 120.32. That's pretty good. Look at an R. 158.53, made that peak. Now, the reason why I gave that a down arrow was that it dropped so sharply, but that becomes a very good chance of a peak E. And then what I do in the technicals is technical Friday, I'll do it in my show a little bit more in detail, is I put this little carrot on top, and that says this, you can't put two up arrows unless you get to another D. So that's the substitute and says, be really careful because this is the move that could pull down. Look, you've got your weekly chart at a peak E. MACD start to turn down, still good, but it's turning down. Stochastic still good at 83% on balance for himself. So this is a work in progress. The nine's over the 14. I would not say that it's, this is the end for the home builders. I would just say, got to be very careful here. And BLDR is the one that I always look at. This is builders resource, uh, first source, sorry, uh, ink, building materials, manufacturing components, made a 214.70 uh, all-time high back in March, and the day it made it, it had a 209 round number low, and now it's gone down to 188. So talking about round numbers, I'll just do this for some of you might know the work that I do in round numbers. Look at this. There's a company that you might have heard of called NVIDIA, had a 974.00 round number high on the 8th of March, it retested it by going to 973.88 or something like that. So that was a peak C1 and C2, just like the Dow, and then it's pulled back. So this is a consolidation. It's down 15 points today, but I'm watching this because it's starting to make slightly lower lows and slightly lower highs. It's got a peak F in the uh, weekly chart, only a peak C in the monthly, and that says, wow. This is still going to go to higher highs in 2024. This is just like a consolidation. So we've got that out the way. All right, I need to, to go to the TLT when we return. I had questions about that and I want to get to it. My email is finally working again. <laughs> My technical problem. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sending you for Tommy O'Brien. This is the Morning Market Kickoff. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, 
He has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, so the Emily Futures, uh, Basil Chapman sitting for Tommy O'Brien. This is the uh, this is live at 9:42 a.m. on the uh, 12th Friday, the 12th of April. <clears throat> We're looking at the futures, trying to rally but still down 32, gone to a peak. See this now. This is the same thing that we were looking at. Could call this a peak C1, C2. In fact, I normally do that if I have time during well, when I'm trading. I'll quickly type in <clears throat> C1 and then go to C2. And that's it. Just be careful because this could now, it's done its job. It could pull back. But if you look at strength, look, the 9 is still over the 14. The magnet is good. Stochastics at 86%. The uh, rental strength index is pulling back a little bit. So it's still holding okay, <clears throat> but it's not showing follow through strength just yet i would just say to you uh 52 6 52 16 18 52 18 is the 200 period exponential moving average of the one minute chart if and when it gets there how it deals with it is going to be really important because if it can't rally above that but instead fails and gets to the 5202 level <clears throat> that's not very good okay so let's get on with this so a couple of questions uh, could I look at GEO? GEO is GEO, um, the GEO group, Financial su uh, Support Services for uh, Immigration Processing Centers. Now, I, I like this. There was another one that I looked at a long time ago. It was a bank, but then it didn't work out. It worked out for, uh, for a brief while, and then it didn't work out. So look at this. This is your peak D right here in the daily chart. This is the technique that I call the instant restart right here. When you go within three bars from a peak D to another higher high, that starts a leg E slash A. I don't always put it in. I put F slash. But when I get to the G, I always put G slash C because so often we see that if there's still residual strength, look at the 9 over the 14. Look at the price way over the 9. This is a weekly chart. Look at the MACD strong. Look at the stochastic up at 90% on balance volumes getting overbought. So that just says to me, and I always put a little circle around this because it's there just so that you can use it when you need it. It's like a 200 period moving average. Do you need it now? Not at all. I do need the nine. Okay. So within this context, what we're looking at, leg D in the monthly chart, I like this very much. I believe that if it consolidates, um, yeah, if this consolidates, You've got, I'm not going to go to the 14 period moving average of 1489 because it depends on the speed with which it pulls back. It made a high four sessions ago, a leg D with a tiny doji candle with another doji, three doji candles out of four so far. It says it's getting a little bit tired there. It did. Uh, <laughs> it opened at a 16 round number and it had a high of 1631. Oops, got to have a little tea here.
and it's now at 1569, so it's under the round number 16. That says to me that that 16 is going to be very important, that even if you go a little higher, it's going to come back to the 16s. But most importantly, 16, uh, 15, no, it's a 16. 1624 is the nine period moving average support, first support. 1489 is the second. To get that green to go pink, you'd have to see this trading for a couple of days under 1420. At this particular point, I think it's holding so well that, let me just draw this in here. As I say, I can go a tad higher. And I'm making this a green rectangle. The new thing I've started now is in the rectangle consolidation at the top, I use green, and when it's at the bottom, I use pink. It should be the other way around. Uh, I used to do the other way around. I might go back to it because pink says you got resistance levels in the rectangle. Green says... <clears throat> Those are the levels to watch because if you break above it, you've broken out. Anyway, so I would take it down. In fact, I'm going to make this even a little bit lower just for now because this goes out. I've got it just now as a daily, but I should put it in as a weekly because I want it to go out a couple of weeks. So I'm going to give it this is the this is the one I'm looking at right here. It can go all the way down to the 14 and a half, 14 area and still be very strong. So I like it very much. I don't know if you wanted to add to it. I wouldn't add to it right now. I'd have patience. If you're in it, you're doing very well. I'd just wait. And what I would wait for, and even there, I'd have maybe a split position. If you've got a position that's much lower down, then I would then I would do this. I would pull, take one pull back towards the 16 if you can, split it, one pull back towards the 1620s, saying, I know it can go lower, but uh, it could also hold very well and just try to go back to the previous high to test it. And I'd like to be there for that. And then you just wait. But I, and then the other one, I would wait and we'd have to discuss where it is. But my, my idea would be in the low 15s to the high 14s because it's acting very well. All right, next question is HMY. Yeah, I know. This is Harmony. I lived on the Vaal Reef. That's where I grew up as a teenager. I was born in Cape Town, South Africa. But then we moved to this little mining town, most beautiful place on earth, down Sea Point, a, village, a, a suburb of Cape Town. And uh, what can I say? Um, that's going to a C right there. Harmony, very strong. So that's an alternate count. That becomes an A. That becomes... Not a G, but a G slash B, and this becomes a C. So this is really strong. I'm just looking at it with tears in my eyes because I wanted to get it over here. Look, at it pulled back a couple of days. <coughs> Held the 14-period moving average. Walked the 9-period moving average and still looking at how many gold mines. Look at the monthly chart. Beautiful cup formation. <coughs> this is a technique that I use. I uh, call the Chapman Wave cup and ladle. It's not a cup and handle. Cup and handle stops at the previous lip and then messes around, makes a little cup and breaks out, and then always comes back and tests it. This just breaks out and roars to a leg D. Look at this leg D right here. So that's called an overlapping wave right here. So go power right through, and it's at D in the weekly chart, 963. That makes this entire area between 820 and 750 major support on any sudden turn down in gold. All right. Uh, next question came in. Uh, let's see, crude prices. Uh, S-O-U-N. I just saw the name. I'll check it out. S-O-U-N. I follow this. <coughs> S-O-U-N is down from the high that it made just under 10. It's trading at 450 right now. Peak C in the weekly. This is for a peak C. You don't want to see a pullback like this. It means you have to restart a whole other thing. Could have another A underneath it, then a B, and then an overlapping wave. So SoundHound AI Inc. A. This is voice and natural language recognition. It's got a bit of a problem right now, but it's holding okay. I, I keep this on my on your list because when these things start to break to the upside, look what they do. They have spectacular moves. It's tootling along in the ones and twos way back in Feb. Spikes up to the high of. Right there, 10.25. So it's been cut more than half right now, down 27. This is S-O-U-N is the symbol. Okay, so the question came in, can I look at the, the key stock? So uh, Amazon. 
Amazon made an all-time high yesterday. Uh, that high was 189.77. Today it's at 188.09. It's just down a dollar. Not a big deal. But that is leg D, leg E. And leg E in the weekly. See, if you look at these weekly charts, they're ready for a push. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors the reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades at TFNN we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news that's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We're back. Basil Chapman saying for Tommy O'Brien. And the, the uh, E-mini is down 33 at 52.10. So I remember I mentioned looking at the one-minute chart, we we're expecting that maybe we get to a D and that the 52.17 area will be very strong, 200-period exponential moving average. The resistance, it wasn't there. It's nothing you could even anticipate. It hit the last at about uh, 8 o'clock this morning. It was up in the 52.30s. <clears throat> Goodbye. All the way down to the 5190s, uh, 51.94, comes back, hits it, and now the longer, the more number, the number of times that it hits now means that it can break the repellent zone and become a propellant zone. It's the magnet zone right now, so we're watching that very closely. So let me just do this before we wrap up, and then I'm going to do my show as long as my voice holds out. We're looking at Amazon. So Amazon is in a leg E. It's maybe a PE that we're looking at. Oops, I haven't updated that price. The price is <clears throat> uh, 189.77. So 189.77. Now I need to do this just before we wrap up. 89.77. Many of these charts that have had absolutely outstanding uh, rallies, even Meta. Look at this Meta. Type it in the right place over there. 
matter is holding well. And as long as you've got your key stocks holding, and as long as the semiconductors, which actually are now down over four, if they start to break down, everything will break down. But right now, even Meta's only down seven at 515 after making a peak F at 531.49. So keep in mind that you've got to have leadership weakening as well. And this rotational strength says there are just key moments where strength comes in and then it fades. And we just saw that in the one minute chart. That's just like a, 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 a micro of the macro picture. So I'm going to do this again. I'll go through to my show coming up, the Tiger Technicians Hour. I want you to give it a full 30 minutes of, of trading, and then we'll be able to tell a little bit more about what the whole the future for the day holds. I'll be back in a few moments for the Tiger Technicians Hour. Check out my opening call. We've got a couple of stocks that are actually holding really well here. One is doing very nicely. Thank goodness, by one penny, it held its stop yesterday. So uh, we're actually playing the short side. <clears throat> in a small aggressive position i'll be back in a moment for the tiger technicians hour hope you can stay it's going to be an exciting day don't forget larry you can still go i'm sure larry's show is the, the fridays trading fridays is going on right now i'll be back in a